Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining me here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Erie County as we talk about COVID-19 pandemic here. Today we have two new positive cases of COVID-19 in Erie County to report. One of the new cases is in their 40s, one is in their 50s. Both are located in zone one. The cumulative cases map by zone will be updated Monday with this information at eriecountypa.gov. Our total is now 90 cumulative positives with 2,034 negatives and 66 who have recovered. Contact tracing continues by the Erie County Department of Health. Of the 90 cases, 53% are female and 40% are male. Regarding race, 75% are white, African American or black is 22%, Asian 1%, multiracial 2%. And Hispanics will make up 17% of that 75% and non-Hispanic 83% of that. And these figures will be on our website. Crawford County has 19 positive cases with 699 negatives. McKean is reporting six cases with 175 negatives, and Warren has one case with 180 negatives. Chautauqua County has 36 cases and three deaths, and Ashtabula County now has 136 cases and 15 deaths. The state has 48,305 cases, 2,418 deaths. Until the stay at home order is lifted next Friday, please continue to stay home. Again, wash your hands frequently for at least 20 seconds, wear a mask if you must leave your home, and keep a distance of at least six feet from anyone who does not live inside your home. Our environmental team continues to make field visits and work within the guidelines from the state to assist all of our businesses as they look to reopening here in Erie County. Again, we start to reopen Erie County next week and beyond. So keep your physical distance and wear your mask or face covering, practice that good personal hygiene, and again, use good judgment. If you do not feel comfortable going to a particular establishment for any reason, then stay away from that business. Do what you need to do to protect yourself. And thank you for doing your part to slow the spread of COVID-19 here in Erie County. Finally, Mayor Joe Schember proclaims Bells Across Pennsylvania Day to be tomorrow, Sunday, May 3rd, in collaboration with the Pennsylvania State Mayor's Association. The purpose of this is to recognize and honor first responders, healthcare workers, and employees of growth, grocery stores, pharmacies, public works employees, and other life-sustaining businesses who have maintained essential services while at risk of infection from COVID-19. To show solidarity with elected officials and residents of municipalities across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, all of whom are fighting COVID-19 on the front lines together. And to demonstrate a collective resolve that Pennsylvania will prevail over COVID-19 and work tirelessly to ensure that their businesses and civic life will thrive again here in the Commonwealth. So Pennsylvania residents, churches, and anyone with a bell is encouraged to ring your bell for three minutes tomorrow, one minute for each of the purposes above, 7 p.m., that's tomorrow, Sunday, May 3rd. So we hope to hear bells ringing throughout Erie County. And today I want to bring, with me, uh, bring forward a guest that I have with me, Brian Massaros. Brian's normal job is the Assistant Emergency Management Coordinator in Erie County Government but during this COVID crisis, he has the title of Logistics Section Chief, and he's gonna talk about masks. And so Brian is joining us now. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, County Executive. Good afternoon. I'd like to provide an update on personal protective equipment or PPE and how it's been distributed to ensure the safety and protection of our first responders throughout Erie County during the COVID-19 pandemic. Before COVID-19 entered Erie County, the Erie County Department of Public Safety and the Erie County Department of Health had a small stockpile of N95 masks. It is expected that every municipality and first responder organization should have the 
should have their own basic level of preparedness for a pandemic as well as other disasters. Pennsylvania Title 35, the Emergency Management Services Act requires all boroughs, townships, and cities to have their own emergency management program and to follow the same requirements set forth by the National Incident Management System, or NIMS. When local first responders have, have resource needs, they are to report those needs to their local emergency management program. It is the responsibility of that emergency management program to provide those resources by any means that they can, such as on-hand inventory, mutual aid, rental, donations, or through commercial vendors. If the municipal emergency management program is unable to provide for those needs, then a resource request is, re is submitted to the county emergency management program. If the county is unable to fill the request, the request gets elevated to the state. If the state cannot fill the request, it gets forwarded to the federal government. We receive PPE from the federal and state stockpiles, as well as county inventory, and we distributed to our local first responders, hospitals, and long-term care facilities, such as nursing homes. Specifically, the Erie County Department of Public Safety Emergency Management Division distributed to our first responders 30,009 N95 masks, 2,227 gowns for fire and EMS, 1,435 face shields, and 13,941 surgical masks. In addition, we have been able to determine local resources or businesses in the, in the area that offered personal protective equipment and that has been provided to local first responders and municipal emergency managers as a source to purchase additional equipment or supplies. On March 17th, the County Emergency Management Division made an initial push to transportable EMS agencies of 25 N95 masks, 10 gowns, and 24 face shields to each agency. The N95 masks came directly out of the county inventory. The gowns were purchased by the county and distributed, and the face shields were provided by the Commonwealth. Quick response services or QRS agencies were provided a box of 25 N95 masks that came out of county inventory. Working with our healthcare partners, we implemented a process to quickly and efficiently restock transportable agencies with N95 masks. This process was simple. When a transport crew entered the hospital with a patient that required respiratory protection, the crew that was wearing the N95 mask could exchange their old mask for a fresh one at the hospital. This process efficiently used our inventory of N95 masks and allowed the crew to replenish immediately after a call. As part of this process, Erie County staged 3,000 N95 masks at the four area hospitals. As the federal and state governments provided us with additional personal protective equipment, we provided additional N95 masks to law enforcement agencies. Based on 14 days for the number of patrol officers that those agencies had on the streets, the total push of PPE to law enforcement was 7,495 masks. MCO West was directed by the Department of Health to disperse their supply of N95 masks to the county they represent. MCO's distribution plan was based on the number of patient care reports or PCRs that were submitted by the counties in 2019. Erie County used MCO's PCR statistics to distribute both the MCO masks and the additional PPE from the state and federal caches. The additional PPE pushed to counties first responder agencies was 25,359 N95 masks, 13,941 surgical masks, 1,938 gowns, and 740 face shields. 
Our distribution of this PPE started on April 15th and was completed by April 17th. In total, Erie County has distributed 55,117 N95 masks, 16,942 surgical masks, 2,237 gowns, and 1,891 face shields to our first responders and healthcare facilities. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, there has been a lot of talk in county government about PPEs, personal protection equipment, and I want to thank uh, those in the Public Safety Emergency Management Division who have worked diligently to make sure that our first responders have had the protection that they need when they're out there serving all of us during this time of COVID-19. So I really appreciate you bringing that very important work forward and, and letting the residents of Erie County know um, about that important work. And now I would like to open it up to our media for questions either for me or Brian, and we'll start with Talk Erie today. Uh, good afternoon, Kathy Stoll Natale. Thanks for the question. I'd like to uh, just follow up on what Brian reported. Is there any obligation on uh, first responders and law enforcement to report back to emergency management regarding their uh, inventories? Uh, I guess the, the numbers in a vacuum don't mean a whole lot to a lay person. I mean, they sound like a lot, but if they're all depleted, then that's a problem. Can we, do we have any idea what kind of percentages of remaining N95s are in stores at individual law enforcement and first responder agencies and so on? We do not here at the county. Um, those agencies, they're supposed to report those totals to their emergency management coordinators in their municipalities. And we have been, since this started, um, for our information and to pass along to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, a report from those emergency management agencies, basically asking them not necessarily what they had in stock, but you know, were they getting into a situation to where it was going to become critical soon so we could start planning, you know, if they needed another push? And, you know, that's the process that, that needs to be followed. Can you break it down for me just so that I understand? Let's take the city of Erie. Who would be in charge of that management part? And what is the communication flow back to you and the state? In, in the city of Erie, their emergency management coordinator is Fire Chief Joe Walco. Um, we, we do have conversations with, with Chief Walco, and, you know, we, we ask for emails just, hey, updating us on what your current status is. Has anything changed? Uh, during, during this pandemic, we've asked them, you know, are any of your, any of your firefighters or, or city personnel, are they in quarantine? Are they in isolation? You know, any, do you have any, you know, personnel needs, equipment needs, you know, just reach out to us and, you know, just let us know so we can notify the state and, you know, get a total picture of, you know, where our municipalities are and, and what kind of state of readiness they're in. I appreciate that explanation. Thank you, Brian. No problem. Thank you, Joel. Uh, Jet TV. Yeah, hi, Kathy, it's Samir. Uh, this is also for Brian. So just taking a look at uh, the beginning of when this COVID-19 pandemic started, how uh, prepared was Erie County for this? Well, it, it, it's kind of hard to judge. You know, we, we looked at, you know, day-to-day -day and, and what we had to handle day-to-day -day problems and, and, and disasters. And, and we noticed real quickly at the county that you know, if this did expand to, you know, great proportions that, you know, we really wouldn't have enough. And that's why, you know, we took out of our stock to push to those agencies to begin with and worked with the hospital to be able to replenish those masks for them so we wouldn't get to that crisis point. You know, so we could maintain a, maintain a stock, maintain a flow, you know, allow them to, you know, give them a little, little bit of masks to begin with to stock. And then hopefully they would never go below that 25 masks that we provided because it would be, you know, replaced at the hospitals. Thanks. Thank you. Erie Times News. 
Uh, yes, hello, Kathy. This is uh, Ron Leonardi. Uh, Kathy, you mentioned yesterday that you expect to see a spike in uh, COVID cases uh, once we transition to the yellow phase uh, starting next week. Uh, do you fear that a lot of residents may kind of view that upgraded yellow phase as a reason to relax the uh, social distancing and masking measures that they have uh, adhered to for the past uh, month and a half? Uh, we certainly feel that people will be out a lot more and around each other a lot more than they have been. And uh, we know that when people do start to go out again, we need to have the masks on and we need to keep our social distancing our six feet away and continue to wash our hands often. And it uh, maybe we'll feel more relaxed to people. So I think there will be um, a certain percentage of people who will relax the efforts they've been making and that really concerns us. And of course, just people being together more uh, will make it more possible that COVID will spread. But I also think we have something on the other side of the spectrum, and I've talked to a few of those people who are just terrified of this. Maybe they have some underlying health condition. And um, you know, I've tried to uh, calm people down and say, as long as you're doing the right thing, um, and if you don't feel comfortable ever in a situation, then just don't go there. Don't go in that store, wait till you can go to an early morning hour or a late uh, evening hour. Uh, when you can have less people there or whatever it is in the situation that you feel uncomfortable, just remove yourself from that. And so it's going to be up to each one of us to protect ourselves, but also by wearing our mask, as I always say, we're protecting everyone else. So I do agree, though, that people will probably get more lax, and that's where the concern will be. Erie News Now. Hi, Kathy and Brian. This is Jonathan Skinner. Um, this is for Brian, but Kathy, of course, feel free as well. What sort of you all's uh, reaction right now to the uh, bill that uh, requires the idea of COVID positive people to go to all law enforcement agencies passing in the state Senate um, and sort of being on the way to the House right now? What sort of reaction? And are you all preparing for that in any kind of way if it does eventually pass both? Well, obviously, if it passes the House and is signed by the governor, because there's that piece that has to happen, too, uh, we would abide by that and it wouldn't be that difficult for us. Uh, but we have great concern for people's privacy, and um, we feel that what we had put in place even before the rest of the state did, that was uh, flagging all of the addresses of the COVID positive uh, individuals, their addresses in our 911 center, and then those, um, if anyone goes there for uh, a call, whether it be fire, police, or emergency uh, management uh, technicians, EMTs and paramedics, they would have uh, that flagged and they would know that in that home is a COVID positive person and use extra precaution. But our biggest fear was that um, first responders might also get complacent. Uh, if they feel that all of the names uh, are in there, um, then that's the person you have to be concerned about, which is not true. Uh, we know that uh, people could be called to a house of somebody who has the symptoms but hasn't been tested yet. Uh, someone who has uh, no, doesn't have any symptoms and maybe will never get tested. And we know that we have quite a few people who've been asymptomatic. And so we've told our first responders, you should respond to every home as if there may be a COVID positive person in there. And the other thing is if you have the name and you have Mary Smith and Joe Smith living in the house and Mary Smith is the positive and Joe comes to the door, very likely the uh, other person who's been living together with that person uh, may also be positive and may never have been tested. So it doesn't, it gives people, I think, too much of a false sense of uh, security. And it also, in my opinion, really, um, really makes it difficult to keep people's uh, privacy protected. And that's something we feel very strongly about too. Thank you. Talk Erie. Yes, Kathy, the uh, child care issue is coming back up again uh, via questions. And I thought this was pretty poignant. What, re what research is showing that while it's unsafe for schools to reopen, is it safe for child care facilities to open under the yellow? And I know we're still waiting on a lot of guidance for next week, but your thoughts? Well, we are waiting for that guidance, and you know the state does oversee the uh, the uh, daycare centers in the Commonwealth. Uh, that's not under county's purview, um, but obviously they are going to have to have fairly stringent guidance, I believe, for that. Um, one of the things we do know is that children seem to contract COVID-19 less than adults and have milder symptoms than adults, uh, for the most part. So that's a good thing. 
Um, I even, I think I read one country, and I forget which one it was, over in Europe had opened up the grade schools, but not the high schools. So um, there may be some science around that, but again, I haven't read enough into that to know what the science is, but uh, the state, you know, down at the State Department of Health, they've been making these decisions as to what should open and what should not, and I guess that they've determined it's, uh, with the guidelines in place, it will be uh, a safe enough situation. Thanks. Uh-huh, Jet TV. Yeah, hi, Kathy, Samir again. Um, so have you had any further discussions following yesterday's announcement with uh, the state and the governor, or Dr. Rachel Levine? We've had no further discussions. We're waiting the guidelines, which they had told us would be out on Monday. We have sent questions, though. Um, the staff yesterday was putting together a list of questions and getting those down to the DCED um, on specific things that we were wondering about. I don't know that they've gotten a reply. I haven't heard that they got a reply from that yet. Perfect, thanks. Uh-huh, Erie Times News. Yes, uh, Kathy, uh, yesterday marked the uh, resumption of the construction industry and the opening of the marinas, golf courses, and campgrounds. Did you receive any early feedback on those activities, and did your uh, enforcement staff investigate any complaints or encounter any issues with guidelines or uh, safety measures? I didn't hear of any specific um, calls about complaints, but I will tell you that we have surveillance teams out this weekend. Um, at the golf courses, at marinas, at campgrounds, um, to uh, just to observe, just like we did when we first got the masking guidelines uh, coming in and saying everyone must have a mask who's in a business. This is when the life-sustaining businesses were told that masks were mandatory and anyone going in there. So uh, I've reported on that surveillance work that we did. And it was really more for us to just get a handle on how well the um, guidance was being complied with. And obviously, if one of my surveillance teams is out this week and see something truly egregious, they'll just call the business, uh, whether it be the marina or the golf course, and, and let them know what's going on and ask them to correct it immediately. So uh, I'll probably have a much better idea on Monday as to how all of those are going um, when the surveillance uh, team's report is brought forward to me. Erie News Now. Uh, going into next week, will the sort of masking look any different under yellow? Like if you're walking around someone and you're still six feet away, will you still need to have a mask on? Or how is that sort of uh, going to be looking differently between yellow and, and red? The masking actually shouldn't look any differently. Um, in fact, you should be very, very cautious when you go out to have a mask on. Um, the only time you should not be wearing a mask is when maybe you are, there's no one else around you. If you're out walking and there's no one else around you, you can, or you're just walking with your spouse or someone who lives in your house with you, uh, you don't need to have a mask on. But I always carry mine with me. And then as I see people approaching, um, I just throw my mask on. Um, and then once I've passed them and it is, you know, a decent distance, I just take my mask off again if I feel like it. Um, I, when I ride my bike, I have a bandana that I tie around my neck. I don't wear it um, when I'm riding, but if I come close to anybody, if I see that there's another biker and I'm maybe gonna be close to them or some, I'm gonna stop at a stop sign and, or a stoplight and there's uh, walkers or bikers there, then I throw my mask or my bandana up over my nose and my mouth to cover that. So again, it's just um, anytime you're within uh, a close distance of any other person who doesn't live in your house, you need to have a mask on. I was at the grocery store early this morning. Everyone was wearing masks. People were all walking in with their masks on. It's great to see that. We need to see that with every single business that's gonna reopen next Friday. Thank you. Uh -huh. Talk Erie, do you have any last questions? Just real quick, have you heard anything from DCNR about the peninsula, about Presque Isle? Uh, they're, notice, they're showing on their website that they're going to at least open at least one restroom uh, at the beach, uh, effective on May 8th. But uh, anything new that you're hearing from DCNR? So today, uh, I think it was earlier this morning, I did get a um, uh, communique from DCNR that went out, I think, across the state about what they're doing at their different state parks. And they did say they will open up at least one restroom uh, within all of their state parks, and they will have the marinas open in the yellow uh, county. So that would be our marina that we have out on Presque Isle. And that there would be able to be programming if it was outside and no more than 25 people. 
So I thought that was a very interesting um, new thing that I hadn't heard. And of course, we know that Presque Isle and even out at the Bluff State Park, uh, there's a lot of state programming that goes on in those places. And so as the weather gets nicer, maybe you can go out and enjoy one of their programs outside. I don't really know what they're going to do here. But uh, that is actually information that is up on the website. I don't know that it's on our county website yet, but it's certainly on the state website. And um, for anybody who wants to read further into what is allowed and what's not allowed at our state parks at this point. They did talk about beaches opening on June, I believe it was June 8th was the date. It was in June. Um, so I know we usually have our beaches open on Memorial Day weekend here at Presque Isle, but it looks like they won't open till June 8th. And honestly, the water's way too cold usually before then, so uh, um, you can still go out and walk around the peninsula, but no swimming until the uh, lifeguards are out there, of course. Stay safe doing that. Thanks. Uh-huh. Jet TV. Yep. Just one last question. So as we move into this yellow phase uh, at the end of this upcoming week, um, is there any fears that I guess businesses will start to reopen or get back into whatever form of normalcy they want to prior uh, to that eighth date? Well, we have asked all businesses, and when they've called us, you know, the, the rule is you don't open until the 8th. Um, will some of them try to push that? They might. Um, you know, if we get complaints, we will follow up on complaints, but we, you know, we hope that all businesses comply. Uh, it's only fair and equitable to all the other businesses that might be your competitors that everyone wait until May 8th, which is Friday. And most businesses honestly need that time just to get things figured out. They might have to put up some new structures in their business to, uh, you know, have guards between, like the, the guards you see, now see at the grocery store between the cashier and the check, person checking out and other businesses may be doing some of those kind of things. So I, I imagine that most businesses are going to take this week's time to do the work that they need to do, get their employees ready. Um, so everyone knows how the guidelines are going to affect their business and then be ready to roll next Friday. Erie Times News, do you have any final question? Uh, yes, Kathy, uh, you mentioned yesterday you believe the Milk Creek Mall will likely remain closed uh, under the yellow phase. If that's the case, is that a decision that you support, and, and if so, uh, why? So I was told that they would not be able to open because uh, just no way to control the number of people that would be in the mall. And that is a concern, obviously. The mall can hold a lot of people. It's got a lot of square footage, but... Um, I was concerned when I did watch one report on one of uh, the TV news stations a few weeks ago from the owner of the mall who said they wouldn't be requiring people to wear masks coming into the mall. Something like that is very, very concerning to me because everyone should be requiring masks on any place that's outside of people's homes. So uh, my concern with the mall is just how do you control the crowds there? How do you make sure people have masks on? People should have masks when, on when they go in there. Would there be hand washing uh, you know, stations? Would there be some kind of disinfectant for people? So uh, it's a decision made by the state. They're looking at a lot of different factors when they decide what opens and what doesn't. But I know that some of these bigger entities, uh, even theaters, for example, uh, are not opening. So um, hopefully we can do really well in the yellow phase um, and everyone can help us get through this yellow phase successfully and we can get to the green phase when when pretty much everything, I guess, would open back up. Although I think there'll still be limits on gatherings to uh, more than 25 people, but there'll still be some limits. So I ask everyone to please help us get there and help us by wearing your mask and by staying at least six feet away from people and using good personal hygiene. Erie News Now, do you have a final question? Yeah, just uh, one more, Kathy. Uh, Quest Lab has started doing antibody testing in our area for individuals who think they might have a mild case. Uh, will that data, if it shows that more people have been exposed to the virus in our area, uh, be shared with public health officials? You know, I'm not really sure about that, so I don't have a good answer for you, but I'll try to get one for next week. Uh, I'm not really aware of what they're doing and uh, in, in enough detail, and I'm not an expert when it comes to these antibody tests. Um, they're fairly new, but um, I'll try to get an answer for you for next week. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, I want to thank Brian Masaros again for joining me and explaining to everyone about our personal protection equipment uh, program and how we've really been trying to make sure that all the people on the front lines, our first responders, our 
uh, people who are working at our hospitals uh, have the equipment that they need to keep them safe while they're out there protecting all of us. And I want to thank all of you for joining me here on a Saturday. It is beautiful. I hope that you have a chance to get out and walk in one of our, our parks or our beautiful trails or someplace in Erie County where you can get some fresh air and really enjoy the beauty of this place. But while you're out there, wear your mask. Stay at least six feet away from anyone else that you encounter while you're out. And when you get back home, make sure you wash your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds and use hand sanitizer if you have it as soon as you get in your car. And in the meantime, please stay home as much as you can and please stay safe. And lastly, please stay calm.